welcome to Sabbath School for Kids, brought to you by Baraton TV, here and hereafter. Today we're going to be looking at lesson number six, so I'd like all the kids to go, get your lessons, your Bibles, notebooks, and anything else you may need, and come back so that we can continue with our lesson. In the beginner class this week, we'll be looking at the story of Noah. And the title of our story is Noah's Big Boat. I brought an illustration for you of what Noah's Ark may have looked like. And our memory verse is Psalm 89 verse 1. And as we had done last week, we are going to do it with actions. The memory verse says, I will sing about the Lord's love. Our actions were, I will sing about the Lord's love. Let's do it again. I will sing about the Lord's love. And we had seen that Noah was a very close friend to God. They were very, very good friends, just like you are good friends with your best friend. And they used to talk to each other a lot, most of the time. And one time, God came and talked to Noah and told him that he was very sad about what the people were doing on earth, and he was going to destroy everything with a big, big flood. But he told Noah that he was going to save him and his family because they were good and they listened to God's instructions. And he told Noah to build a very big ark. It was going to be very, very long and very, very wide and very, very high. And when Noah had written down all the instructions that God had given him, he built the big, big boat. And when he was done building the boat, God brought animals along to stay in the boat with Noah and his family. And the animals came in two by two. As you can see, some of the animals here, we have uh, hippos and elephants and tigers and monkeys and all kinds of animals. They all came in two by two. And when all the animals had gone in and Noah and his family had, had gone in, God closed the door of the ark and shut it so that Noah and his family could be safe inside. And they stayed in the ark until it had rained and rained and rained for 90 days and everything was covered you couldn't see anything but water and after some time god brought out a sun and the sun dried up the water and noah and his family were able to come out of the ark and when they came out of the ark god put a beautiful rainbow in the sky to remind them that he will never again destroy the the world with a flood and from this story we learn that we thank god for taking good care of us. Just as God took care of Noah and his family and the animals that were in the ark, he will also take care of us in everything we do, whether we're playing or we're eating or we're sleeping, whether we're going to school or we're going to church, God is always there taking care of us. In the kindergarten class, we will be looking at an animal parade. The title of our story is An Animal Parade. And the memory verse is Psalm 52 verse 9, which says, For what you have done, I will always praise you. Psalm 52 verse 9 says, For what you have done, I will always praise you. Last week we saw how Noah followed God's instructions and built a very big boat, just like the one we have here. And after he had finished building the boat, it took him 120 years to finish building the boat. When he was done finish building the boat, uh, he had called all the people around him from the neighboring uh, villages and he had preached to them and told them that God was going to bring a very big flood. And he had called them and told them that God wants to save them too. And if they wanted, they could come into the ark with him. But everyone kept laughing at him and thinking that he was just a madman talking crazy things because it had never rained before and they had never known any such thing as a flood. So they thought that Noah was maybe crazy or he hadn't heard what God was saying properly. But Noah kept preaching and preaching and the people just didn't want to listen. So eventually God told, uh, spoke to the animals and the animals came into the ark. And all the people came to watch how the animals came into the ark and they were not distracted by anything. The animals knew where they were going and they went straight into the ark. And the last, for the last time, Noah came outside, stood outside of the ark and told them, please come into the ark, God wants to save you. 
please come and join my family. But no one listened. So God told Noah to go into the ark, him and his family. And when Noah got in, God closed the ark and took care of them while they were inside. And while his, fam his family and uh, Noah and his family were in the ark, God took care of them. He also took care of them while they were doing his work and building the ark. So we learned that God is always taking care of us and we should thank him for that. As the, as the Bible verse says, for what you have done, I will always praise you. God has done very many things for us. He has provided for us. He protects us when we play. He protects us when we go to school. He protects our family members. So we should always thank God for all the good things he has done for us. In the primary class, the lesson for this week is the fire that didn't go out. And our text is Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, that says, Take your first sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. We saw how Moses had been saved during his infancy when he was a baby. His family saved him by putting him in a basket on the river and his life was saved. And he grew up and he became a prince of Egypt. But at one point, he killed one of the Egyptians and he was so afraid for his life that he ran away and he went and lived in the desert and he found some people living in the desert and he joined them. And while he was there, he became a shepherd. He used to look after many, many sheep. And on one of his days of going out to take care of the sheep, he saw in the distance this fire, this bush that was on fire, but it seemed like the bush wasn't burning out. He went to the bush to see what was happening because he could see that the bush was burning, but it wasn't actually burning. And when he got close to the bush, he heard a voice calling him and the voice told him, Moses, take off your shoes for where you're standing is holy ground. And he was wondering, who is this who's speaking to me? And the voice said, I am who I am. It is God speaking to you. And Moses took off his shoes. In our days today, we have so many ways of communicating with people. We can write messages, we use our cell phones, we call people, we send messages. We also use our computers and our laptops. We send emails or we can Skype. But in the Bible times, we can see in the story of Moses that God came and spoke to him directly through the fire. And God also speaks to us today. He uses the Bible. He puts his word in the Bible. He tells us what God has to, to say to us. He speaks to us through our pastors, through our parents and our teachers by helping them in, uh, tell us what is right and what is wrong. And we also communicate with God through prayer. We always pray to God. Our prayers is us talking to God. And even when we go to church, we are still communicating with God. When we read our Bibles, we're communicating with God. When we sing our songs, we are communicating with God. And when Moses took off his shoes, it was a sign of reverence. He was showing respect to God. He was in a holy place, so he needed to take off his shoes. And even us, when we go to church, it is a holy place. We need to show reverence to God and be respectful of the place of worship. And how can we be respectful when we go to church? We keep quiet. We don't make noise. We don't uh, talk when other things are going on. We sing when we're supposed to sing. We read our Bibles when we're supposed to read our Bibles. We kneel down when we're praying. Those are some of the ways that we show reverence to God. Now, I want you to print this uh, flame pattern. It's in the teacher's guide at the last at the back of the book. If you don't have the teacher's guide, we'll put a link in the description box below. But once you've printed out this uh, flame pattern, I want you to take note of the verses we're going to read. And after we've read the verses, I want you to write down what the verse says about being respectful. The first verse is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, submit yourselves to one another because, you're rever because of your reverence for Christ. Submit yourselves to one another because of your reverence for Christ. In Ephesians 5 verse 21, we see that we should respect one another 
because of the reverence we have for God. We don't just respect God, we also respect each other. So on that flame, I want you to write respect one another. Okay. Now, the next verse is Luke chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Then Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath he went, as usual, to the synagogue. He stood up to read the scriptures. So this Bible tells us, this Bible verse tells us that Jesus went to the synagogue and he read his Bible. So one of the ways we can show respect is by reading our Bibles. Uh, when we're alone and also in private. Make sure you write reading your Bibles. Okay. So when you have done that, I want you to stick it in your room where you can see it so that it reminds you that you need to be respectful. Okay. So don't forget to print out your flame pattern. Read the two verses that I've told you about, Ephesians 5.21 and Luke 6, 4 verse 16. Find what it says about being respectful, write it down on your flame, you can color it, and then put it somewhere you can see to remind you to be respectful every single day. In our PowerPoint lesson, we will be looking at the story of the blind man who was healed by Jesus on the Sabbath. The title of our story is, I Believe. And the key text is John, John chapter nine, verses 35 to 38, it says, when Jesus heard what had, been, what had happened, he found the man and asked him, do you believe in the son of man? The man answered, tell me who he is, sir, so that I can believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have already seen him, and he is the one who is talking to you now. Verse 39. Verse 38. I believe, Lord, the man said, and knelt down before Jesus. So, there is the story of the blind man who had been sitting uh, along the way, and he had stayed there for so many years. And in the Bible, the, Jew, the Jews believed that if you had uh, a sickness or if you were lame or blind, it was because he had committed a certain sin and God was punishing you. But Jesus was trying to change that kind of thinking. So nobody had gone near the blind man because they all thought that, oh, he was blind because he had done something bad or maybe his parents had done something bad. But Jesus came and found him sitting there and he asked him, what do you want? And the man said, I would like to, to see. And that is when Jesus uh, spat on the ground, mixed uh, up some mud, put it on the eyes of the blind man and told the blind man to go and wash himself in the pool of Siloam. And when he had washed himself, he'd washed the mud of his eyes, he was able to see. And when he was trying to tell the people of how this man had healed him, they got angry and threw him out of the synagogue. And when Jesus heard what had happened, he went and found that man and asked him, uh, do you believe in the Son of Man or the Son of, the Son of God? And the blind man didn't know exactly what Jesus was talking about, so he asked him, who is this son of man that I may believe in him? And Jesus said, you're talking to him. I am the son of man. And the man knelt down and immediately he believed that Jesus was the son of man and the son of God and that Jesus was the one who healed him. And the lesson we're learning here is that we need to believe that Jesus is the son of man. And when we believe that Jesus is the son of man and the son of God, then we are able to receive his grace. We accept God's grace when we believe in Him. Many times we have situations that help make us um, doubt who Jesus is or what Jesus can do for us. But I want to remind us that even in those situations, we still need to believe that Jesus is who He is. He is the Son of Man, He is the Son of God, and He's very, very powerful. When we believe in Jesus, we're able to receive all the blessings that He has for us. We're able to receive the grace that He has for us. In the real-time lesson for the teenagers, 
we are looking at our identity in Christ. This will be a two-part lesson. We're looking at it. we'll look at the first part this week and the next uh, uh, next part next week. So don't uh, miss out. So our identity in Christ. As we grow up from the time we're in primary school, even in nursery school, through primary school, through high school, through even college, maybe. Most of what we become is based on our experiences. It's based on what our parents and our teachers envision for us, what our elders envision for us. The way they raise us uh, makes us who we are. But at some point we have to be able to define for ourselves who we are. You ask yourself, who am I? And sometimes answering that question can be a bit difficult because we're also influenced by uh, social media, we're influenced by the things we watch, by the music we listen to, and even the friends we keep. But today I want us to identify, to find our identity in Christ. And I want us to read 2 Corinthians. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says, Anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone and the new has come. Okay, the other verse I want us to read is Romans. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 says, Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people, and we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. These two verses remind us that we are all children of God, and as children of God, we all are partakers of everything that Christ is given. We are all entitled to what he has. He has the kingdom of God. We're also entitled to that. He has love and compassion and many traits that we can also possess. And many times when you're trying to find our identity in Christ, trying to be more like Christ, there are certain things that try to deviate, uh, to distract us. We have, sometimes we feel like the devil is telling us you're not good enough to be a child of God, you're not strong enough to be a child of God, or you do not deserve to be a child of God. But I want to remind us that God wants each one of us to be part of his family. He wants each one of us to find our identity in him. And we need to be reminded today that we are all children of God. We are all part of God's family. We are all just like Jesus. In as much as we may have certain weaknesses, but we are all God's children. We are all uh, entitled to his blessings. We all have our identity in Christ. Once we accept Jesus as our uh, personal savior, then we are part and parcel of his family. We are the royal, we become part of the royal priesthood as most adults would say, but we need to find our identity in Christ. So please keep those verses in mind. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 verse 17 and Romans 8 verse 17 to remind you that you're part of God's family, you are, part, you are a child of God. In the Cornerstone lesson, for those who use the Cornerstone lesson, we will be looking at our lesson entitled Idol Threats. And this is the story of Rehoboam. The story of Rehoboam can be found in 1 Kings chapter 14. You can go and read that whole uh, chapter and see what happened to Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the son of Solomon and after his uh, father died he took over and when he took over he for some reason deviated from the worship of God he went to worship idols and in as much as he was raised knowing that he was supposed to worship God he started worshiping, worshiping idols and as a consequence of worshiping idols he was constantly at war. If you read uh, 1 Kings chapter 14, you'll find that he was attacked many times. One of the times he was attacked by the Egyptians and the Egyptian king came and took everything that he owned and now he was left with nothing. And even after his death, there was the, the, his kingdom was still at war with those around him. One of the main things that we learn from this story of Rehoboam is that idolatry is very rampant today it may not necessarily necessarily be a statue. Idolatry means putting anything above God. It can be TV, it can be a school, it can be uh, your friends, it can be a toy, it can be your phone. 
But when something becomes more important than God, that is what idolatry is. And we need to understand that when we put anything above God, there are very bad consequences that come out of it. Just like when Rehoboam stopped worshipping God, he started worshipping idols. His kingdom was destroyed. He was constantly at war, which is not a good thing. When we put anything above God, then we lose a lot of... Um, we lose a lot. I can give one example. Sometimes when you put your, for example, your phone or you put TV above God, you might end up failing in school. It's just an example. Or you may lose your friends. As also an example, I'm not saying it will happen. But the point is, when you put something above God, there will always be detriment. There will always be consequences, bad things that will happen. And what is important is that we should always put God first. And when we put God first, it means that we need to respond to Him. Responding to Him means that we need to have a relationship with Him. You need to pray that is talking to Him. You need to read your Bible so that He can talk to you. You need to worship when you go to church, when you go to Sabbath school. You need to respond to the, to the love that God is giving us. So don't forget that we should not put anything above God. God is very important. He made everything. He's the most powerful thing that is. Nothing that we have on earth is more powerful than God. So don't forget not to put anything above God. God comes first. It's God first, others second, me last. And make sure that you subscribe. Come back next week for next week's lesson. And invite all your friends to come and join us. This is Baraton TV, here and here after. Have a blessed day.